So this is an annual planning program for what sounds like a very similar um, situation that you've you've got yourself in, mate, in terms of a, a local football club. They're not professional athletes, um, but they're pretty serious about what they do and, and you want to maximise their return on, on investment from a time point of view. So I've broken down, this is an annual planning, basic annual periodization, um, but it's a good go-to. I find it's really helpful to reference my annual periodization when I'm doing my weekly blocks, monthly blocks, um, because I can look at, um, what areas have we identified um, as important and therefore they can influence um, what areas, what, you know, physiology, from physical point of view, what am I trying to chase and then what am I trying to maintain? And that's the challenge with football as well is you, you're not going to go through like linear periodization. It's going to be um, something where you're, you're doing a lot of, uh, a little bit of everything uh, at once and there's nothing wrong with that. So very different to how a powerlifter or a weightlifter would change or, or a track and field would train. Um, yeah, once you've mapped out your, your annual plan, uh, your, your rough training load prescription, um, so what you measure, you will improve, but also you'll, it's important that you've, you're you getting some sort of feedback back from the athletes to see how they're coping with the program so you're not too rigid with your annual plan. You're actually adjusting it um, and you're agile um, with your prescription to how the athletes are on that day uh, and then you know, plan out your conditioning sessions with the dates appropriate to um, tie in with those uh, sessions that you've done. So like I mentioned, I'm more than happy to share this spreadsheet, mate. If you've listened to this recording, hit me up or anyone that's listened to this recording, if, if, you, if this would help you, I'm more than happy to share. That's what the, the Get Better Plan is all about, is helping high-performance staff um, with their coaching and their programming. We're going to go back to the uh, presentation now where I'll just quickly talk about my top 10 tips be very brief and then I'll hang around for some questions. Okay, so I started as a personal trainer. I did my certificate three and four for six years and I think that's where I would recommend most people to start um, before going into their sports science degree. Get used to your organizational skills and also your coaching ability. So the, the ability to be able to um, structure a training session for someone or a group of athletes or uh, general population, take them through the hour uh, and give them an affecting training system, but also to effectively um, sell them the program and practice that because uh, it definitely is a skill. Then from there, seek out with strength and conditioning coaches that you want to be like. Um, so for me, I caught up family connection with Luke Boyd, who was the head strength and conditioning coach at the Hawthorne Football Club at the time. Uh, he was predominantly looking after their gym program, their strength and power program. And it was great to catch up for him for coffee and that actually eventually led to me working at Box Hill Hawks through another connection, a, a friend that was I was going to uni with that had nothing to do with Luke Boyd. But when I saw Boydy on game day uh, at Box Hill, it definitely helped with having a foot in the door at Hawthorne. So um, build your, your networks early in your career, uh, even if before you even start your sports science degree, um, because you'll get a bit of an idea of what it's like to work in different sports and, and what resonates best with you. 